In this week's episode of Superhero Saturday, we're taking a dive into the deep end and exploring superheroes and supervillains with underwater powers. Let's jump in, super friends! Hello, super friends, and welcome back to another episode of Superhero Saturday, where we talk about the arts of superheroes, storytelling, and so much more. My name is Annie, and you guys might not know this, but I am actually a certified scuba diver. I have always loved the water and water sports and warm weather, and as we're coming to the end of our summer vacation of this year of 2021, uh, it kind of got me thinking about underwater superheroes and supervillains and how a lot of those characters take a lot of liberty with the physics of underwater living. So in this week's episode of Superhero Saturday, we are going to talk about how to create a superhero genre character with underwater superpowers. It's a surprisingly popular power set because anyone who loves the water always wants to be able to go swim down for longer and for deeper and in various different settings. But unfortunately, there's only actually a handful of characters that have actually made it into, you know, the popular a pantheon of superpowered underwater characters. And usually that's just Aquaman and all of his affiliate characters. And then on the other side, there's Namor, who is a Marvel character that has been a hero and a villain, and all of his affiliate characters. There's also a slightly rarer one that's called Triton that was invented by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And that's about it. If you know of any other underwater type characters that I'm missing, go ahead and pop those down in the comments below because I really couldn't think of very many others, which is surprising because I feel like this is one of those, you know, classic superpowers, like the ability to fly, the ability to lift strong things, the ability to swim underwater. Like, that's pretty typical, right? Anyway, we are going to talk about my five-step process for designing a character's superpowers and talk about what is kind of necessary when designing a character who might be spending most of their time underneath the waves. And while I am a certified rescue and advanced scuba diver, and I've done like hundreds of scuba dives, I'm not an expert at the physics of all of this, you know, marine biology and all that, so this is just a little bit maybe extra bonus material, but not necessarily expert level. But it's a little bit better than just going under the water and flopping around like a fish and calling it a day. If none of the nonsense be something you wish, fly, 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 fish. then drop on the deck and flop like a fish. Fly, fly, fly. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first step in designing your character's superpowers is to consider the power's source. There are a variety of different ways that an underwater superpowered character might be able to have the ability to go down into the depths. That could include being some kind of nautical mythological figure like uh, King Trident, Trident or Poseidon or, you know, there's usually some kind of underwater deity that you can pull from as inspiration for your character. Another great source of inspiration is to draw from marine life itself. For example, like a shark, or a, a whale shark, or a manatee, or a sea cucumber. There's a whole wide variety of different types of underwater creatures that you can kind of incorporate into your hero or villain's theme and pull from their own biology to apply to the character's powers. For this one, it's always great to do your research because you can call someone the urchin and uh, it doesn't help if you know nothing about what a sea urchin does or what it looks like. If you just draw a big blob, that's not really going to actually, you know, match up with the pokey spiky things that crawl along the ground eating sea kelp. Your character could also just be straight up a mutant of some kind or an inhuman or a metahuman and just have some new powers bestowed on their own biology that enables them to function underwater in an environment where normal humans literally couldn't thrive for more than, say, a minute, at least without coming up for air. The other really prevalent source for underwater superpowers is simply the technology to get a person, you know, encapsulated in some way and put them down into the water. Now, this one we're going to be talking about pretty much all the time, because as a scuba diver, technically I have the ability to go underwater and be a hero. 
I just need to make sure that I have my regulator, my BCD, my fins, my goggles, my buddy, and fill my tank and, and chart my dive and know where we're going. And I can only spend a certain amount of time at a certain depth. There's a lot to consider. I actually like to say that scuba diving is kind of the most chill, extreme sport because there you could die in any number of ways, but as long as you follow the rules, it's kind of just floating through the water, but you can breathe. Long story short, if you're considering using technology to power your underwater character, you're going to want to consider a bunch of different factors. You're going to want to consider where your character is getting their oxygen from and the dangers associated with different like oxygen levels, what kind of thermal control they're going to have, how deep they can go, and all sorts of other things that we'll talk about in the course of this video. The best way to do this is just to research scuba diving in general. There's tons of helpful videos and stuff out there, and you can learn the basics of scuba diving and apply those physics and dangers and concerns to your character so that when you build that technology, it's more than just, you know, uh, a little piece that you can throw in your mouth and then you can swim around and do absolutely everything you want underwater. Doesn't quite work like that, even with the best of technology. Speaking about the limits, step number two is to talk about the upper limits of your character or the pros and advantages and capabilities that your underwater character will have. It's not as simple as just being able to breathe underwater. That only solves part of the problem. Some other things you want to consider when designing an underwater character include what depths your character can go to. The biggest thing about scuba diving is that the further down you go, the more pressure you feel from the water itself pressing in on you. Every 10 meters of depth is another additional atmospheric pressure level. So if you go down 10 meters, that's one atmospheric pressure. But if you go 100 meters, that is 10 atmospheric pressure. Can your character actually withstand that pressure without, you know, buckling under or having to deal with that added pressure on their body? And if your character goes up or down in the water column, that adjustment in pressure also has a really significant effect on your physiology. If you surface too fast from a certain depth, the need of your body to repressurize is even higher because if you don't, then you can get something called decompression illness and it literally can kill you. So if your character has superpowers that enable them to go underwater, you may consider having some kind of pressure adjustment power in the power set so that your character can come up and down wherever or wherever they want and not have to experience that danger. Another thing to consider is the temperature of water and its effect on the body. If you're diving into water that is colder than our natural body temperature, which is about 98 degrees, then that water is going to pull the heat from your body pretty fast, a lot faster than in the air. So if you're diving in water that is pretty cold, say around 50 degrees, which I do uh, quite often, then the water is going to get them cold really fast and they may not be able to stay underwater for very long without freezing or suffering hypothermia. And the further down in the water column you go, if, for example, if you want to go really deep down into the depths, it's going to get colder. When your character goes down that far, you may want to consider some kind of thermal regulator for their power set as well. One easy thermal regulator is just to have a lot of blubber on their bodies because that's how marine creatures can stand living down in the depths, for example, like whales or manatees, is because that extra padding on their body gives them a bit of a buffer between themselves, their core temperature, and the cold water on the outside. Another thing to consider is just the vision or the other senses that enable them to perceive the world around them. The further down you go in the water, the darker it gets because the sunlight isn't able to penetrate through the water column all the way to the bottom everywhere in the world. The further down you go, the less reds and oranges and yellows you can see. Everything starts to take on a little bit of a blue hint as well as getting darker. So perhaps your character with underwater powers might be able to see better in darkness so that they can actually see what they're doing down there when they're trying to save the day. You can also consider other features that would uh, give your character the ability to perceive what is going on. For example, some fish and other marine species have some kind of like magnetic or other kind of sensory um, sense, sensory sense, <laughs> that enables them to perceive motion in the water and see when a predator might be coming to attack them. 
So that might be something that you could incorporate into your own character. And of course, humans are not exactly built to swim through water very quickly, at least compared to a lot of the other marine creatures. So you might also consider giving your character some kind of a uh, power boost that will allow them to move more quickly through the water and get to where you're going. When I have my fins on, it makes all the difference and I can actually push myself through the water with relative ease. Obviously not as fast as most of the other creatures that I see when I'm down there, but it gives me a little bit of an advantage. Another thing you might consider is oxygen toxicity at different lower depths. For example, if you have a superhero who has technology that allows them to, you know, automatically create oxygen out of nothing and just put this kind of device in their mouth, uh, going down to certain depths, uh, oxygen is actually poisonous to human beings. That's why scuba divers sometimes use mixed different air types together to go to certain depths and stay down at that area without getting poisoned by the oxygen. It's actually kind of funny because if you get a little bit narked is what we call it, you get a little bit of that O2 poisoning, it actually makes you act a little bit drunk. And lastly, of course, you're gonna wanna consider how long your character can stand being underwater or conversely on the surface if they're kind of a naturally marine dwelling character. I know my fingers get really wrinkly after even just a few hours of diving. So can your character's skin maybe, for example, withstand the salinity and everything of the water or do they have a certain time limit on what they can do? That kind of leads us into step three, which is to consider the lower limits of what your character can do, their weaknesses. This can include things like your character's kryptonite or even just the basic limits of what is needed to use their powers underwater. For this, you can consider the converse of all of the things that I've talked about so far. So if you decide on these different limits for your characters, what are the other limits that can keep them from doing everything that they want to do underwater? Maybe for example, they can't swim very fast, but they can stay down for a very long time. Or maybe they can see really well, but they can't hear very well underwater. I know for me, underwater hearing is really trippy because whenever you're underwater, if you're oriented up and down like this, any sound, no matter where it comes from, sounds like it's coming from right above your head. There are also a lot of different climates underwater that you may wanna consider, whether that's a thermocline where the top surface of the water is warm and the bottom surface of the water is cold, or for example, something like an underwater volcano where the water might be considerably hotter or have different uh, chemical properties than say normal pool water. Maybe that's some kind of limit for your character. Maybe they can't stand very hot water, but they're really comfortable in more of the colder elements and vice versa. You may even consider whether your character can withstand fresh water, salt water, both or neither. What is neither? brackish water probably. Some fish can only handle one or the other and some can handle both. And as far as swimming underwater, you may wanna consider whether your character is native to underwater or on land. Because if a character is native to on land, they might have a hard time you know, exerting themselves a lot and swimming through the water. You might wanna consider whether they need to eat a lot of food or you know, consume a lot to maintain their blubber status underwater and keep themselves warm. Scuba diving makes me super hungry, especially the colder I get, because when my body's trying to maintain its internal heat, that wastes a lot more energy than just, you know, chilling at, you know, 75 degrees. So when I get out of the water, I'm usually starving and I have to eat a snack or drink a whole gallon of hot chocolate. And you can think about this on the flip side. If your character is naturally uh, suited for underwater living, maybe all of those powers that enable them to be an underwater character might not transfer so easily on land and might even cause them problems. For example, if they can breathe underwater, maybe they're not able to breathe normal air at Atmosphere. So that might be something to consider as a weakness. And that kind of brings us along to the next step, which is to consider the side effects of these powers, both the pros and the cons, the advantages and the weaknesses, and how that affects your character's life on a normal everyday basis. For example, if you're more suited to underwater, you might be a little bit more blubbery and have a little bit tougher skin, but walking around on the surface, that might look a little bit weird. If you're used to going underwater in some kind of Arctic temperature, and then you take that character and put them in the desert, they might be having a hard time. Or for example, your character might have scales or even fins that could prove as a, you know, some kind of physical 
manifestation of their powers that might, again, look a little bit weird and you might have to deal with differently on land. Like, for example, do they need to be regularly watered with, a, you know, a salt water spray to keep themselves hydrated? And of course, what is life like for this character? Are there more beings that live underwater? Maybe a whole culture or something of different kind of underwater humanoids that the character is used to and then going up on land might prove a little bit of a culture shock or the other way around. You might feel like you have a home on land and a home in the sea and you're torn between both places. The last step in creating a character with underwater superpowers is to insert your creativity here. And by that, I mean to think about how all of these different powers work together or maybe work against each other in this character's life. And maybe even with other powers that you might add on top of it. For example, one of our users created a superhero that was incredible with their powers. They were able to swim through the water and swim through the air just like it was all the same thing, which is a super cool way to put those powers together. But in that creativity, you wanna think through each of these different steps and then think about those powers in connection with each other. For example, can the character just keep swimming, keep swimming, and then breach out of the top of the water and keep swimming? Or do they need like to go a certain speed to get up into the air or, or what? How does that work? That's up to you to decide. And there you have it. Those are my tips for creating a super powered character with the ability to go underwater. Do you guys have any other tips or tricks about creating characters that can go into unusual atmospheres? Or do you have a favorite nautical superhero or villain, go ahead and put those down in the comments below and we will continue the conversation there. And thanks so much for watching, super friends. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more superheroic content every single Saturday. You can join the team by following us on social media or by supporting us over on Patreon where you can get bonus content, behind the scenes, and even merch and swag. And if you want to see my own superheroes in action, some of which go underwater sometimes, I will say that, uh, you can go on over to our website at www.fearless9.com and pick up some books that may just contain your new favorite superheroes. Thanks again for watching Super Friends and we'll see you next week.